Tired of buying a bunch of different shorts for working out, looking good, and just life in general? Try Bird Dogs. They feel like gym shorts, but look like khaki shorts. The ultra-breathable fabric keeps you cool, and the built-in liner is an added layer of support. To top it all off, Bird Dog shorts look so good, you can wear them anywhere. Go to birddogs.com slash MLB and enter promo code BASEBALL for a free baseball hat with your order. That's birddogs.com slash MLB promo code BASEBALL for a free hat. You won't want to take your Bird Dogs off. We promise you. Imagine you're looking at a balancing scale with everything you do for other people on one side and everything you do for yourself on the other side. If it isn't balanced, maybe it's time to spend a little more time on you. And therapy is a great place to start. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist online who can help you find that balance and stick to it. Visit BetterHelp.com slash positive to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash positive. Jacob Albrocht, Tommy Kester. This is Sports Daily on Wichita's number one sports radio, 97.5 and 1240 KFH. Yeah! Who takes down all the stars in Los Angeles to win the United States Open? How about that? Wyndham Clark getting his very first major championship win yesterday in the U.S. Open. Welcome in, everybody. It's a Monday on Sports Daily right here on KFH. Tommy Castor and Paul Savage in for Jacob Albrock on this Monday. Jad Chambers producing the show as always. Your phone calls on the IHOP hotline. It's open now, 869-1240 if you'd like to join the program. A lot to get to on the program today. Going to talk golf, both the U.S. Open and the Wichita Open. A big-time blockbuster NBA trade. We'll give you the latest on the Bob Huggins situation at West Virginia and a whole lot more. Paul, how was your weekend? Glad to see you today. Well, it was a busy weekend. Watched a good amount of the Open, at least as far as I could. Uh, Had some performances going on with uh, Shakespeare in the park. Uh, Much Ado About Nothing. And uh, that kind of, and and being the fact that it's in L.A., you know, everything's delayed. I mean, you're watching Open Golf and what, till 7.30, 8 o'clock in in the evening. And uh, so I didn't get to see as much as I wanted. But I watched the whole day on Thursday. I watched the whole friggin' day and uh, uh, just had some observations about the course. It was, uh, it, it looked like a course that was going to be very easy to uh, score on, and it was the first day. Greens were so soft that uh, you and I yeah. could have probably played under 100 and been successful. But anyway, it was, uh, it was really fun to watch. And of course, to see Rory out there and to see uh, some of the guys that you're not familiar with. And then, and then uh, Wyndham uh, Clark to end up winning yep. it. Quite a story. Quite a story indeed. Well, why don't we go ahead and jump right into the U.S. Open because right. that, you know, obviously was the big sporting event over the weekend on this Father's Day weekend. Wyndham Clark winning the U.S. Open, his first major championship. Kind of remarkable, Paul. I believe Wyndham Clark was the fourth golfer ever to win a major championship after missing the cut the first two times he had played that tournament. So Wyndham Clark played the U.S. Open in 2021 and 2022, missed the cut in both of those years, and then comes back on his third try and wins the U.S. Open at L.A. Country Club. I think that let's start there. Let's talk about the winner himself before we get into All some right. of the other storylines with Rory McIlroy and Ricky Fowler and others. So Wyndham Clark, uh, I think that you know it was pretty impressive the way that he was able to sort of hang tight In that back nine on Sunday, there were some opportunities for him to drop a few shots and for the guys right behind him, like Rory, to come back up and and challenge him. In fact, there were a couple of bogeys in that back nine, but Clark hung tough. And honestly, Paul, I think that's what I love about the U.S. Open in general. And we can talk about, you know, the Thursday round. We can talk about, you know, how the course was set up fairly easy on that opening day. But credit to the USGA because they they made it a little bit more difficult as the weekend came in. You know, we didn't see really any golfer going extremely low. Wyndham Clark was the only one to finish double digit under par uh, at 10 under par to win the tournament. Um, But, you know, there were some stretches there in the back nine. And that's what a U.S. Open is all about, where you can 
be resilient. You can, you know, it's a battle of attrition, I called it, on Thursday because there are opportunities in any U.S. Open venue to trip up and to let other players back into it. Credit to Wyndham Clark for hanging tight and winning the entire tournament. Right. And, and amazingly enough, it's hard to believe that Wyndham Clark was the 293rd ranked player in the official golf rankings right. a year ago. 293rd, which just goes to show you what we've always talked about on this show, that uh, as we have discussed athleticism and in particular sports, golf may be, uh, uh, Tommy, and, and you can agree with this or not, there's no right or wrong answer, but golf may be the greatest fine line between being a, a PGA championship uh, winner or being, you know, a hundredth on the win list. I mean, it's a fine line in the world of golf, and it's 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 amazing how these things work for some guys. Two hundred and ninety third last year, a year ago, and yeah. now he's champion of the U.S. Open. It just and life changing, by the way. The the uh, the uh, pool of money on that particular tournament was. Three point six million, if I'm if I, my memory serves yeah. right, and, and it's a big purse. You know that's that's life altering for a guy like uh, Wyndham Clark, and so you know it's really cool to see. That's what this tournament is all about. He's got a fun story, or not really a fun story, but an intriguing story, um, backstory with, with his life, you know, from Denver. So I, I, I'm sure that you got behind him, Paul, because he, he's from Colorado, and I know how big of a fan you are of that state. So he's from Denver, uh, went to, I believe he went to college at, uh, at Oregon, I, I believe. I think he was an Oregon duck. Quack. Uh, and then, you know, has played on the PGA Tour for a few years now, again, breaking through for his first major championship. And it was really, um, I, I think, inspiring to watch his story with his mother who passed away from breast cancer when he was in college uh, and, you know, dedicating that victory to her. The one thing I like about Wyndham Clark, and, and you mentioned that fine line, Paul, uh, in the world of golf between being a winner and not being a winner I think some of that has to do with your the, the way that you carry yourself, the confidence that you have in your game. I mean, there's so much mental that goes into being a champion in the game of golf. And Wyndham Clark, I think that's what propelled him over the edge. That, like I mentioned before, there were multiple opportunities for him to fall apart and for the wheels to come off. Right. And I think it was that mental fortitude for him to be able to hang on you know, and, and win that tournament. And that's what we see time in and time out with players look at Brooks Kepka who I think that when he's won major championships he's had not only the physical attributes but the mental fortitude to get it done that leads me into the the next topic when it comes to the US Open Ricky Fowler Paul was tied for the lead after 54 holes and it had been a long time since we had seen Ricky Fowler even in contention for a major championship the guy completely rebuilt his golf game I wonder though and I'd love to get your thoughts on this. Will we ever see Ricky Fowler win a major? Well, you might see him win the PGA coming up. I, I mean, that's kind of a, a question that, you know, nobody knows because we just talked about the fine line of golf. Sure, he could win the very next major that they play. Or he may never win another one the rest of his life. That might be better odds if you want to, you know, if we want right. to call call one of the betting outfits that we deal with and and, and make a bet. But... With that being said, uh, it's, it's it's always hard to say. It's a, such a big part of the mental game. And I appreciate you talking about the mental aspect of this particular U.S. Open. You know, Butch Harmon, as you know, is probably considered, I think, maybe the finest golfing coach to ever, ever, you know, coach some of the big names in the world of golf. Butch Harmon, you know, 75% of his coaching isn't, your swing, your grip, your stance, your backswing, your downswing, your your head location. You know what he's about? Mental toughness, concentration. Those are the things that win in golf. And, uh, you know, if Butch Harmon says it, I believe it. So I, I like that point that you have. And Ricky Fowler is one of those that appears to me to have what it takes physically. The question is, what about that mental thing? What about, you know, because he had a couple of holes that really hurt him. And yep. that that's just, but that's the nature of U.S. Open golf, though, Tommy. That's, that's what happens at a U.S. Open. And, of course, God made this golf course tougher with a little bit of dryness. And right. the greens became quicker. Greens became uh, faster. It became harder to score. 
And when that happened, I think it almost became an advantage to the leaders on on the board because once the game, once the grand, uh, greens get harder and faster and hard to put a, a ball by the pin, and uh, what would normally be a two putt ends up being a three putt because of the greens. You know, it's uh, that that that's the way that, but that's the way U.S. Opens work. But uh, it certainly wasn't Thursday, was it, with conditions of the no, golf course? Sure. And, and, you know, going back to, to Ricky Fowler, and I think you can put Rory McIlroy in this category a little bit, too. You know, at least with Rory, he's won a few majors, but it's been a long time. He hasn't won a major uh, in nearly 10 years, in, in nearly a decade. And this was a guy that, you know, was heir apparent to the throne for Tiger Woods uh, when he first burst onto the scene and he won all those majors right away. There's been a dry spell, and, and Rory was one shot away from a playoff. He was one putt away on 18. Uh, for forcing a playoff with Wyndham Clark. And then, you know, who knows what would have happened, but you would, I'm, I think, would have liked Rory's experience in a playoff situation had he, be, you know, been able to get to that point. I think that Rory can get back and win another major. Um, you know, he, he's young enough. He burst on the scene at such a young age that I think everybody sees him as this elder statesman now. You know, he, I think he's got time, you know, to be able to win another major championship right. or maybe even a couple major championships. I'm not so sure about Ricky. Uh, I, and I would argue that Ricky Fowler is probably the best golfer or at least the most recognizable golfer to never win a major championship. Uh, he's got the popularity. He's got the fan base. You know, everybody knows Ricky Fowler. Even the most casual PGA golf fans know who Ricky Fowler is. You know, he's on TV doing commercials and all that stuff, but he's never won a major. He's won the Players' Championship, but he's never won a major. And, you know, as much as I was behind him, I, I want I want to see Ricky win a major. I want to see those players get that monkey off of their back. It's happened before. Sergio Garcia did it. Dustin Johnson did it. You know, they had all gotten the the criticisms that they had never won a major. And I wanted to see them all get, get theirs. Ricky's the same way, even though he was tied for the lead after three rounds with Wyndham Clark, there was something in me that I just thought he, he's not going to be able to hang on. He, he just, I don't think he he's, I don't think he has it at least right now to be able to break through and win a major championship. And so I, I wonder, and it would, it would really honestly at this point, Paul, Surprise me if we see Ricky Fowler win a major. Well, you know something, you're onto something there because, you know, I didn't really realize what I was thinking, but I was thinking to myself, well, this is Ricky Fowler over, over Wyndham Clark. I mean, I mean, right? Sub, you know, subconsciously, I think. I, I, I mean, I was actually thinking, well, I mean, Ricky Fowler. This is Ricky Fowler for guy's sakes, and uh, he's he's going to overcome whatever the problems are. Isn't that funny how our minds work? And part of that is you are correct. Ricky Fowler over the over the last few years has been one of the faces, not the face, but one of the faces of professional golf, and and in a good thing too. But uh, I'm kind of with you on that, and I, I'm trying to figure out to myself what went wrong. Well, not making shots was what didn't go. Not being able yep. to putt. That's what went wrong. Yeah, you had a couple of blow up holes. You've got to be able to manage that. Uh, in fact, you know, when we had Sam Stevens on the show, you and I, a couple of weeks ago, he mentioned minimizing those errors in a U.S. Open. Bogies are sometimes okay on a track like L.A. Country Club, uh, but double bogies are not. And so that's ultimately what led to the unraveling of Ricky Fowler. Real quick, uh, I looked ahead, Paul. The next major championship is the Open. Uh, which is always fun. Link style golf, typically in England, the favorite to win Rory McIlroy, as of right now, the betting favorite seven and a half to one odds to win the open championship. John Rahm right behind him, nine to one, Scotty Scheffler, 10 to one, Brooks Kepka 14 to one. You have to go all the way down. And I know it's super difficult to defend a championship. Wyndham Clark, the defending uh, U U.S. Open championship to go back to back is 35 to one odds to make it two in a row and win the Open championship coming up in July. A couple more minutes, Paul, in this segment before we take a break. Let's shift gears very quickly. Stay on golf, but talk about the Wichita Open. Ricky Castillo is the champion of the Wichita Open out at Crestview Country Club over the weekend. Won in a playoff. Uh, this is a kid, Paul that was in and, and was an NCAA champion, played at Florida, just burst onto the scene, just turned professional, comes in, wins the Wichita Open out at Crestview in a playoff. Uh, 
I would imagine that kind of ascent for a guy like Ricky Castillo from going from an NCAA championship to all of a sudden winning on the Corn Ferry Tour wouldn't shock me one bit to see this guy on the PGA Tour very soon. Well, he certainly played well. There's no question about that. 19 under, uh, of course, the three way tie, and then this was a playoff we were talking about and yep. uh, winning a winning a playoff. So yeah, you're right. Uh, we have seen these guys where we've never heard from them again, and then we've also seen some of these guys where you start to, to see them all the time on the tour. So, you know, it's hard to say. A young kid, uh, a kid who is uh, just out of college, uh, but what an experience to come in and win your very, very first uh, professional tournament that you enter. This isn't like it's his yeah. his, his first, right. first uh, you know, PGA or it's his first pro tournament Period at any level. So that's 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 almost fairy tale stuff. So yeah, that is a, a great story. And congratulations to this young man. A week ago, wasn't it like a week ago or two weeks ago? He was playing uh, for his university. So that's a really right. cool story. Yeah, it's a really really quick jump uh, for this guy, and he had rounds of 67, 62, 66, and sixty six for nineteen under par. I think that's about. Uh, that's about on par, I would say, for the way that Crestview plays typically during the Wichita Open. But it was that second round 62 for Ricky Castillo that really propelled him uh, into victory. Of course, got into that playoff uh, with two other players, won the playoff. It only took one hole uh, for him to win uh, that playoff with a, a short par putt to win the tournament. Congratulations to Ricky Castillo and also congratulations to the Wichita Open staff for putting on a stellar tournament uh, tournament director Dusty Buell in his first year did a great job. I was out there on Friday, Friday afternoon uh, on the 18th green, just a lot of fun. And, you know, it, it, it certainly is uh, the premier, one of the most premier events in Wichita. And so uh, right. I, I, I don't know how often Paul, you've had a chance to get out there and enjoy the Wichita open over the years, but it's one of my favorite events of the entire year. Right. And, and I, I've gone out there many, many times and chased autographs too, by the way. And, and yeah. I just want to point out, J- Jad and I were talking before we went on the air. Does the Wichita Open have the coolest trophy that I've ever seen in any sport? Oh, the propeller? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, is that not love the it. coolest thing you've ever seen? I mean, yep. how about putting that up on the mantle fireplace? Come on now. that I think that's terrific. Yeah. No, it's it's so good. Um, the, the fact that it embodies – what this city is known for the aircraft industry, all of that stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely a big fan of that. And, and I, what I love about the Wichita open so much is not only the fact of the way that people in this city support it and come out and enjoy it and have a great time. Even the non golf fans get out and enjoy it for the weekend. But I, I also love how much the players love playing in the Wichita open. And we hear it year in and year out from players on the corn Ferry tour saying that, it's their favorite tournament of the year. They love coming to Wichita. They love playing Crestview. They love seeing the support from the fans. They love getting on to, you know, number 17 and having the fans cheer them and all of that. Uh, you know, so it's it's certainly, um, in my opinion, the crown jewel or one of the crown jewels of the Corn Ferry Tour. So once again, congratulations to Ricky Castillo winning the Wichita Open for the year 2023. I think that takes care of all of our golf talk as we get going here on a Monday on Sports Daily. We're going to take a quick break when we come back. You know, it's not the most fun topic to talk about, but it did happen over the weekend. We do want to address it, do want to talk about the situation with Bob Huggins at West Virginia. We're going to do that on the other side. It's Tommy Castor and Paul Savage on a Monday. It's Sports Daily right here on KFH. What you watch depends on what kind of mood you're in. Sometimes you're craving comedies like Friends or South Park, and sometimes you're more into dramas like HBO Succession and House of the Dragon. There's also cooking shows like Chopped and Beat Bobby Flay, and even movies like The Lord of the Rings and Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Well, Max is the streaming destination that has the best of entertainment for whatever mood you're in, anytime. And plans start at as little as $9.99 a month. Max, the one to watch. Subscription required. Visit max.com. Looking for an adventure? Find yours in a Toyota truck. Like a Tacoma, the ultimate off-road machine. With available crawl control, you'll tackle anything in your way. 
or an electrified Tundra with more power than ever before and a spacious high-tech cabin that puts you in charge. Or go with the legendary 4Runner, always reliable and durable over the toughest terrain. No matter your adventure, Toyota has you covered. Visit buyatoyota.com for more and let's go places. I would suit up in my uniform and you're going out on patrol. What are we going to do tonight? Well, we're going to rob some drug dealers. And uh, I know how to do it really well. Listen to and follow The Set, an Odyssey Originals documentary podcast series. Available now on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your shows. I'm not a bad guy, man, but I loved being that dirty m- Welcome back, everybody. It's a Monday on Sports Daily right here on KFH. Tommy Castor and Paul Savage in for Jacob Albrock today. Let's go right now to the IHOP hotline, 869-1240. Got Mike on the line. He's got a question about Patrick Mahomes. Good morning, Mike. What's on your mind? Hey, guys. Hey, it's cool to be on the air. What chances do you guys think of something? What's that? I said for sure. Go go ahead. Oh, thanks. I love your show, guys. Hey, what's the ch- what chances do you guys think that someday Patrick Mahomes will have as many Super Bowl rings as Tom Brady currently has? What do you guys think? That's a good question. I mean, I, I obviously, Mike, we're looking at, you know, he's got two Super Bowl rings right now. He is, you know, in his mid to late 20s. Uh, I think it's going to depend upon how long he plays, um, you know, certainly on that path right now. Um, but that, that's a pretty tall task to ask for, right? Uh, you know, Brady's got several more than Mahomes does right now. So it's going to be a process. Uh, you know, there is, um, you know, quite a bit of work, I think, that needs to be done with the team around him. Of course, Chris Jones, that's the big topic right now, Paul, uh, when you look at the Kansas City Chiefs and the fact that there's not a deal done yet for Chris Jones and, you know, conversations about that with Brett Beach and what that looks like. But I think that, you know, of course, we we all know that it's more than just the quarterback, even though Mahomes is incredible and amazing. You got to have some of those other foundational pieces. So, um, you know, Paul, I don't know how much you followed. And Mike, thanks for the call and thanks for the question. Uh, I don't know how much you followed, Paul, that this story with Chris Jones and, you know, whether or not a deal is going to get done with him anytime soon. But he's, he has not reported to minicamp yet. Does that concern you at all? Well, that's a great question, but let's not overlook Mike's question. That's a fascinating question. Will Patrick Mahomes have as many rings as Tom Brady? And to answer Mike's question before we go on to, to sure. uh, you know, signees and, and guys that, that, to Chris Jones, for instance, and guys that need to be signed, before we go on to that, at first blood check, are you kidding? The chances of that happening are slim to none. And yet I think to myself, well, hold on. If this guy stays healthy, if he doesn't have any, any health problems or catas- catastrophic type injuries, and I mean what I'm talking about is knee injuries and shoulder injuries and those kind of things, and if he has none of those and the Chiefs continue, and it looks like they want to continue to – to keep great players around Patrick Mahomes. And the fact that player after player after player, particularly receivers, want to play with Mahomes, yes, I'm going out on a limb. Yes, Patrick Mahomes will have more Super Bowl rings than Tom Brady. All right. Well, fair enough, Mike. Again, thanks for the question. Thanks for the call. Appreciate you calling in and asking that. Uh, But I do, I'd love to know your thoughts, though, Paul. Does it concern you, though, that Chris Jones has not reported to minicamp? No, because that's the game that's played. How many times do we see this? I get it. I understand. How do you how do you show you're serious about wanting a new contract? Well, I don't show up to minicamp. Do you think that will affect Chris Jones on his ability? Are they going to teach him any new technique that's going to change his game at minicamp? What are they going to do at minicamp with Chris Jones that he doesn't already know? That he not only knows inside – but instinctually knows because he is an instinctual player, and those are hard to find. Those guys that, you know, they see a situation, they see a, an opening that's not there, and yet they know it's going to be there. Those are, in, those, are, those are the kind of guys that are hard to find. They'll make this work. You think the Kansas City Chiefs want to go into the next, super, uh, no, next season defending a Super Bowl not uh, with Chris, Chris – uh, uh, Allen on Chris the Jones. On, uh, Chris Chris Jones, Jones yeah, on the, yeah. on, on the uh, 
defensive line? Of course not. You wouldn't think so. Chris Jones is, and by the way, who over the course of the last couple of seasons had said he might be the MVP? Oh, sure, you got Mahomes. But you know how important it is to get push in the middle, on the middle of an offensive line? When you can get push and you take away the comfort area, the step-up area for a quarterback in the NFL to step up and avoid rim runners and step up into that pocket, Tommy, how important is it a guy to take that little step-up area away? Chris Jones is one of only of a handful of, of interior defensive linemen that can do that. They will get him. They will sign him. He's going to be looking at about $30 million a year is my guess. Uh, he may become the highest-paid defensive lineman in the league. Won't surprise me, even going past Aaron Donald. I, that wow. won't surprise me. But, yes, they're going to pay for him because he is so important. Other than Patrick Mahomes, if you said what's the second most important ingredient in this team, I would say Chris Jones. Yeah, I mean, he's a foundational player along with Mahomes and, and probably Travis Kelsey. Right. I'm not concerned yet. I will be concerned if training camp gets underway and there still is not a deal done, um, you know, just because of the nature of these things. And I don't want distractions, you know, as you get into training camp and then into preseason and all of that. So I'm not concerned yet. Uh, I, I still overwhelmingly believe that something will happen and something will get done. With Kansas City, there is just that tiny little shred of doubt in my mind that, you know, I guess we'll have to wait and see. And and there, there I think, is a slim chance at this point that a deal doesn't get done. But we'll cross that bridge when we actually get to it. Let's shift gears here, Paul, and talk a little college basketball. Definitely uh, not a fun conversation to have, uh, not something that we revel in or enjoy talking about necessarily. But uh, Bob Huggins, the, the legendary coach for West Virginia, spent a year at Kansas State was at Cincinnati for a while, resigned over the weekend uh, after getting pulled over and arrested for DUI in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania over the weekend. It's the second controversy in less than, what, two months for Bob Huggins. Uh, went on a radio show uh, like six weeks ago and used offensive and homophobic language uh, on the, the radio interview. We talked about it on this program. We talked about, you know, the the... Uh, offensive language that Huggins used. He was uh, given a, a punishment by the university, kind of a zero tolerance situation, suspended for a couple of games, had to pay a fine, and then was pulled over for uh, DUI. I don't know, Paul, if you've had a chance to read the arrest report from Bob Huggins from that situation. Um, he blew almost three times the legal limit on the breathalyzer, uh, didn't know where he was, didn't know how he got there, had a shredded tire, I mean, this could have really easily turned into a tragedy, uh, a clearly avoidable tragedy. And so less than 24 hours after that arrest happened, Huggins uh, released a statement along with officials at West Virginia uh, announcing his intent to resign and retire as head coach of the Mountaineers. Like I said, it's, it's nothing to revel in. But I think my question now, Paul, on this Monday morning, uh, about 48 hours removed from when all this all happened, is... How will everyone remember Bob Huggins? What is the legacy of Bob Huggins? Is it what he did on the court and how good of a coach he was and that fun personality and, you know, kind of that gruff exterior, but, you know, was always fun to watch? Or will it be, unfortunately, these controversies that ended up derailing his career? Well, there's going to be two ways he's looked at. One way is going to be in the state of West Virginia and the other is going to be in the rest of the country or in basketball world, I'll put it that way, maybe throughout the world, uh, because he is a Naismith Basketball Hall of Famer and everybody knows who he is. Even in China, they know who you know the Basketball Hall of Famers are. So right. with that being said, in the state of Washington, he's going to be forgiven. He is a West Virginia born and raised individual graduate of West Virginia. There's going to be a forgiveness for him, I predict. Now, not next week. I don't mean next week, but I'm talking about in the future. Time will heal this for the citizens and the university uh, at West Virginia. No, it's not going to be pleasant, and it's not going to be easy to get through, but it will heal for those in West Virginia. However, it was, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, however, for the rest of the country, it's tough to take, partly because of one month ago. Do you, do you remember one of the elements of, of his punishment was – 
They're taking a million dollars off his contract a year, a million dollars a year, yeah. less. And he agreed to that. I don't need that extra million. And that's what uh, the penalty was for the uh, comments on the radio. So with that being said, I think that, Tommy, we're going to have a two-pronged forgiveness situation. But I don't know. Two instances this close together makes it hard to forgive. And I, as one, will forgive. I probably won't forget. But I've always been about forgiving. And uh, because that makes your life better. That's just a little something, a little nugget. Nobody needs to listen to <laughs> Coach Savage. What's he know? But, but I think it would be better to forgive him. But you don't necessarily need to forget. But there will be an element in, in, in certain circles that will forgive him. Over time, over time, not next week, not next month, maybe not next year, but over time, Tommy. I think for me, more than anything else, I want to see Bob Huggins get the help that he needs, that he clearly needs. Um, you know, this is not the first drunk driving arrest that Bob Huggins no. has had. Um, it, he had one that forced him out of his job at Cincinnati, um, where he had been wildly successful. He had led the Bearcats to, I think, 11 straight NCAA appearances in the tournament and then was arrested for drunk driving. I believe in 2005 was the year that that happened. Uh, ultimately resigned a year later. Um, and that was due large in part to that situation. Got a second chance and went to K-State. And I'll tell you what, Paul, that was a fun year. I know it was only one year that Bob Huggins was in Manhattan. But, man, it was a fun year. You had Michael Beasley, uh, who you know turned into a superstar. Um, that was incredibly fun to watch. The, he, he revived a Kansas State basketball program, even though he was only there for one year. Then he left to go back to his alma mater at West Virginia. I don't think anybody could have blamed him for doing that, for leaving K-State after one year to go back to West Virginia. And then you had a, a pretty successful tenure with Frank Martin as the head coach at Kansas State. So I've always enjoyed following Bob Huggins from the year that he was at Kansas State to the time that he was at West Virginia playing in the Big 12, watching him. Uh, you know, he, he, he's one, he, he was one of, and is one of the great characters in college basketball, but from a human perspective, these two controversies six weeks apart from each other were both self-inflicted mistakes. There's nobody that can be blamed for this other than Bob Huggins well, that's for, for either, sure. either situation, right? Right. There's nobody else that you can point at and say, oh yeah, like that person has some responsibility. No, no, no. It's Bob Huggins. Bob Huggins chose to litter his floorboard of his SUV with beer cans right. and drive and blow over double the legal limit uh, and not know where he was right. and not be able to tell officers where right. he was going. Well, um, He's the only one to blame for that. So I think more than anything else, from a, from a human perspective, I like Bob Huggins a lot, and I want to see him get the help that he needs. Well, a quick question for you, Tommy, if you don't mind. And uh, no right or wrong answer once again. But, uh, you know, Bob Huggins is in the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame, as are, you know, Bill Self. And there's, there, well, there's, there's been lots of guys that are in, in the Hall of Fame right now as we speak who are still actively coaching. And there are those who say that, uh, like players, uh, maybe coaches should have to retire, be done with basketball before they're placed in the Hall of Fame. And, of course, the reason that they do it the way they do it, at least one of the reasons, is that uh, you know some of these coaches are going to coach into their 70s and 80s. Give them a chance to be in the Hall of Fame. Let them enjoy the fame that goes along with the Hall of Fame. And uh, that's why a guy like a Bob Huggins has already been inducted into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. So I guess my question is sort of two, two-pronged, if you don't mind. One, does this tarnish the reputation of the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame? And secondly, Tommy, should the Basketball Hall of Fame say, we're done inducting active coaches? Because this isn't the first time that a coach has had a run-in with the law or got into trouble with regards to uh, cheating with the NCAA back when there was an NCAA that had teeth. Uh, it's not the first time that something bad has happened with a guy that's already been inducted into the Hall of Fame. Tommy, should they stop inducting active coaches 
and uh, uh, and should they uh, should they make a point of of making sure that, or, or maybe even a third question might be, should they when these kind of things happen have a device to expel them from the Hall of Fame? I that, that, yeah. I just thought of that. I'm not sure I I <sighs> like that, but yeah, it, it's, that's a, really it's an tough. interesting question, isn't it? It's really tough. I think that you know had the situation and thank God it didn't, but had the situation ended tragically. Oh my God. Uh, I hadn't you know, thought of that. at that point, oh. all bets are off. Yeah. Oh my uh, gosh. I hadn't I, thought of and, that. And th- thank, thank goodness it didn't, it, yeah. that didn't happen. Right. Um, you know, but I think that you, you could have some kind of mechanism to do that. I'm not sure it's appropriate in this particular case, uh, because thank God they avoided disaster. Bob Huggins avoided disaster when he made that decision to get behind the wheel. Um, as far as human life is concerned, I don't think that uh, I don't think it tarnishes the legacy of the Naismith Hall of Fame because the the Hall of Fame didn't do anything. Bob Huggins did, so I, I don't think it tarnishes the legacy of the Hall of Fame. But I, I I do get your point as far as saying maybe you wait until coaches are retired to induct them. I don't know. I think each case is different. It is great to see active coaches be able to you know be recognized while they are at their peak and, and in their prime and, and doing, you know, amazing things. So I, I get that. I get that point. Um, I'm undecided on that, but I do think that it would be fair in kind of an egregious situation to have a mechanism to maybe expel in an in, in inductee. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I guess I'll, I'll pose it back to you because you've got such a, a history with Hall of Fames around the state of Kansas and locally. Is there a mechanism in any of the Hall of Fames that you're a part of to remove somebody from the Hall of Fame if something happens? No, uh, not not in any of the Hall of Fames that I'm that I'm dealing with. No, that's a good question for us locally. There is not. There is no no wording with regards to that in any of the bylaws that I deal with. Interesting. Well, it, it certainly brings up that question not only with the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame, but uh, just Hall of Fames in general and. I know that we don't take any sort of, of pleasure in this. There's no joking around about it. Um, I've always liked Bob Huggins, and, and I'm sad to see him go. And I do hope he gets the help that he needs. But, uh, you know, certainly a, a disappointing end to the Bob Huggins era in Morgantown with West Virginia. We're going to take another break. When we come back on the other side, we'll do a giveaway. So get ready for that. It's coming up next right here on Sports Daily. <coughs> Sports Daily is on KFH. Welcome back, everybody. It's a Monday right here on Sports Daily. Tommy Castor, Paul Savage, Jad Chambers producing the show. Hope all the dads out there, by the way, had a great Father's Day. Uh, I was really fortunate enough, Paul. Um, I, I love playing golf and uh, I have was fortunate enough to be able to play uh, Prairie Dunes up in Hutchinson yesterday uh, for Father's Day with some friends of mine and uh, that's such a great course it's it's so much fun to play um, so I got to do that in the morning and then we had a Father's Day steak dinner uh, last night which was awesome um, so definitely a, a Father's Day and, and knowing you know now that I've got a, a, a toddler and a newborn getting a chance to just sort of get out and play some golf with some buddies and then have a steak dinner. Uh, I couldn't have picked a, a better father's day than that. Well, that's just terrific. I, and by the way, Prairie Dunes is a great golf course. If you've never tried to go give it a shot. Mm. I played it once in, uh, in my younger days when I was pl- trying to play golf, played it once, hit a ball over into some rough, went over and started trying to find it. And there were a number of yuccas. There's yuccas all over the place, as you know, oh, yeah. out there. And uh, I heard this. <laughs> I didn't see it, but I knew what it was, and I'm not messing with rattlesnakes. That rattlesnake got that ball, I can tell you that, and I got out <laughs> I, got, I got out of that real quick. Never saw it, but I yeah. know a rattlesnake when I hear a rattlesnake, so there you go. It's a, uh, it's a very difficult and challenging golf course. Not easy. That's and right. I'm, I'll tell you, like, I'll be, you know, straight up, I'm not, a, I'm not an amazing golfer. I'm okay. Uh and, you know, Prairie Dunes is one of those courses that it makes even like solid golfers humble uh, very quickly. Uh, we, one of the guys in my group, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, played college golf. The guy hits it a mile. 
uh, can smash his driver. He compresses the golf ball, takes the divots, has the, the backspin on the wedge shots. And I think he shot in the mid 80s uh, yesterday at Prairie Dunes because it, it's a it's a tough golf course. And so uh, but definitely scenic and it's held its fair share of uh, you want to talk about major championships, which we did at the very beginning of the show. The U.S. Senior Open has been held out there. I know that there have been I think the ladies U.S. Open was out there one year. Uh, a very historic and, and beautiful golf course out there in Hutch. So I was fortunate enough to be able to play that golf course yesterday. The weather was great, too. I mean, we couldn't have had a more perfect Sunday uh, in June for Father's Day in general for all the dads out there for the final round of the Wichita Open. I mean, it was an absolutely gorgeous day uh, in this part of the country. And so I, I think it was um, it was awesome. And hopefully all the dads out there well, uh, had, a, had a great Father's Day. Yeah, yeah. How my, was Shakespeare, by the way? Yeah, my my son for, for Father's Day says, Dad, I'm going to. I'm going to go to the Sunday night performance in and in Andover uh, for okay. your much to do about nothing. So my son rode out there with me and and sat around during during theater call for that hour and then then stayed and watched the whole play. We had a great time. What a great Father's Day! What a what a great gift for me to have my son in the audience. It was a lot of fun. And by the way, Tommy, three more chances to uh, see Shakespeare in the Park. Much to do about nothing. That'll be next week. On uh, that'll be next Friday at uh, which one is it? Roll, uh, no, blah, 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 blah. It's at College Hill, and then Saturday okay. at uh, 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 downtown at uh, well, what's the name of the park down there? Riverside, and then and then it'll be at, the last one will be at Friends uh, Church uh, over on the west side. So there you go. There are the three more chances to see Shakespeare in the park. Much to do about nothing. Which well, is very this, cool, and, sort and of the theme of this show on, on occasion. Kind of, yeah, kind of. I, yeah. I can, I'll understand that. I know you mentioned that your performance on Sunday was in Andover at the Capitol Federal Amphitheater. Beautiful. Speaking, I'd never it's, seen it's, I it love, before. I oh love my that gosh. venue. It's, it's so great. And speaking of the Capitol Federal Amphitheater, Odyssey and KUIN bring you concerts in the park, sponsored by IHOP. Free live music Fridays from 8 to 10 p.m. in Andover Central Park at the Capitol Federal Amphitheater. The address of that, by the way, is 1607 East Central Avenue in Andover. This Friday night, Across the Pond will be playing. You can bring your lawn chairs, blankets, and extra cash for the food trucks. No coolers are allowed. The gates open at 6.30 p.m. If you're looking for a fun, free yes. event for the family, uh, there's a playground right there for the kids. There's the amphitheater right there. Friday night, Across the Pond. Concerts in the Park, sponsored by IHOP, sponsored by Odyssey, and our sister station, KEYN. Before we take another break and get into hour number two, let's do a giveaway, Paul. Yeah. The Wichita Wind Surge, finally back in Wichita. They've been on the road for the last couple of weeks. They're back in town this week. We've got a pair of vouchers for tickets to see any Wind Surge game, a home game of your choice. We'll do that right now. We'll take caller number one on the IHOP hotline. 869-1240 if you want to go see the wind surge for any home game this season. Be caller one right now. Jad will take your call at 869-1240. We're going to take a break. On the other side, we'll kick off hour number two with some NBA talk. It's on the way for you next on Sports Daily. Summer's always the perfect time to invite your friends and family over for a backyard barbecue. And when you're looking to make your get-together a little better for you, Beyond Meat has you covered. Beyond's products are delicious, simple to cook, and can be added into so many different meals. It's seriously that easy. Like the new Beyond sausages, available in hot Italian style or brat. They're packed with protein, have that true meaty flavor, and sizzle great on the grill, just like you're used to. Plus, they're made with simple, plant-based ingredients that you can feel good about. And the best part, your friends may not even be able to tell. Look for the new Beyond Sausage, now with new meatier taste at your local store. For great recipes and where to buy Beyond Sausage, go to beyondmeat.com. And get ready to summer better with Beyond.